Member statements. The member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Um, we are coming up to one of the great seasons of Northern Ontario. Winter. Winter. <laughs> but along with winter, and we've had our first snow. It's a beautiful day here today, but we've had our first snow. And along with winter, we love winter, but sometimes we don't lo love the road conditions. No. And where I'm from, we have one road that goes north, Highway 11. And we all do our best to maintain Highway 11, thank the contractors. There are parts of Highway 11 that need some serious attention. We're asking the government to look at that. But a big part of Highway 11 is when Highway 11 is closed, there's no detour. There's no way to get to medical appointments. There's no way to get to your family. But there could be a way. There used to be a way, and it was called the Northlander. It was called passenger rail. Yep. And there's a lot of things we don't agree with the Conservatives on, but in the election campaign, we both campaigned to bring it back. There are a lot of people in the North who are working very hard putting plans together to bring it back. The government keeps talking about wanting to work together. Here's one. We'll work together. Let's bring back passenger rail service to northeastern Ontario so northerners are treated the same as the rest of the people in this province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next month is Women Abuse Prevention Month. It is every woman's fundamental right to live in safety and security, free from th threats of violence in her own home and in her community. In Canada, almost half of all femicide victims were killed in their own homes. This means that women are at greater risk where they should feel safest. Mr. Speaker, in Ontario, 83% of reported spousal violence victims are women, with Indigenous women being 2.5 times more likely to experience spousal violence than their non-Indigenous counterparts. My own riding is not immune to the impacts of gender-based violence against women. Mr. Speaker, this past year, Cornerstone Family Violence Prevention Centre in Northumberland County provided service to more than 2,000 women, children and youth operating at an occupancy rate of 127 percent. The United Nations has designated November 25th as International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, and as such, through you, Mr. Speaker, I encourage folks from throughout Northumberland, Peterborough South to purchase and wear a purple scarf or tie from Cornerstone Family, Family Violence Prevention Centre or another local women's shelter to show women that we support them, that they are not alone, and that violence against women is never okay. Member statements. No motion. Didn't you just have one? Member statements. No, you didn't. Member for Sudbury. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, last week, my nails were painted pink as part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and today is Early Childhood Education Appreciation Day, so it feels appropriate to share a story about an incredible Sudburyan that I recently met. Uh, Robin Simpson is an early childhood educator at Ernie Checkers Public School, and she's also a breast cancer survivor. Robin was 35 years old when she noticed a regularity in her breast. She phoned her best friend, Stacy, then she phoned her doctor. Three days later, she was at Health Sciences North breast screening program, and they performed a mammogram and an ultrasound, and a radiologist called for immediate biopsy to verify that it was cancer. And March 8th was a difficult day for Robin. That was the day her family doctor told her she had stage 3 inflammatory breast cancer. It was seven months after her father, Don, died from leukemia, and it was two days before her daughter, Harper, turned two years old. Robin told her family, then she told the staff at the school where she works, an early childhood educator, and then she asked the principal, Ernie Checkerist, to draft a letter to the students' families. And it sounds like a depressing story, Speaker, but it's not. After 18 weeks of chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and 25 days of radiation, Robin Simpson is now cancer-free. She had a positive experience. In fact, Robin Simpson might be one of the most positive and upbeat people I've ever had the pleasure to meet. She spoke positively about the staff and the nurses at Health Sciences North, told me about the friends she made while going through cancer treatment. And when Robin learned that most people with cancer are older than 40, she started a Facebook group for Northern Ontario's under 40 cancer patients. During her treatment, she visited regularly with her school at Ernie Checkerish. She provided updates and shared her story with the students, 
And for many of these students, cancer might have been a story about how people died, but because of Robin, cancer became a story about how Madame Robin lived, how she got sick, how she lost her hair, then she got well and it grew back again. She even dyed her hair rainbow colors because one of the students asked her to. Right. I asked Robin if there's anything I could share with the assembly, and she said timing is the key with breast cancer. Inflammatory breast cancer causes death within 30 months, and because of Sudbury's breast screening program, Robin waited four days to begin treatment. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, in my riding, I met with many of my constituents. One of them was Mr. Carl Mills, a retired Lieutenant Colonel who served in the Royal Canadian Air Force for over 25 years. He is currently a member of the 400 Squadron Historical Society. He highlighted the important work the society is doing and the importance of military history in Canada. Mr. Mills is organizing a mission to recover an aircraft and remains of Richard Walter Risser, a flying officer who crossed into Lake Ontario in 1953. He is also currently seeking sponsorships of $3,000 for 25 paintings of Canadian aviation history to honor the 100th anniversary of 400 Squadron. Mr. Carl Mears, one of my constituents, is doing important work to remember our men and women in uniform. I am glad to have met him, and I am working hard to be of service to him. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The member for Toronto St. Paul's. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Today I'd like to give a huge shout out to two organizations that are all about fostering community in Toronto St. Paul's. On October 11th, we celebrated International Day of the Girl, and as part of the festivities, I had the opportunity to attend Skills for Change's Women Connecting Women at TIFF partnership presentation of the film series Stories from Home. These films showcased the lived experience of newcomer and immigrant women who now proudly call St. Paul's home. Skills for Change is an organization that provides employment services, language, settlement bridging programs, mentoring programs for women and youth, seniors, as well as entrepreneurship hubs. Needless to say, they're always very busy, but never too busy to provide a warm welcome to someone new and trying to fit in. I also got to attend Ebony Toastmasters, my first time ever attending a Toastmasters organization. And again, located in the riding, they promote community, public speaking, leadership skills. And this is the first time I had ever stood up in a room filled with strangers, because it was my first time attending, and I got to tell them about what brought me to politics. You know, my own experience two years ago of hallway medicine. And I got to tell you, what a safe space they provided for me, where I was able to speak, they were able to speak, we were able to hear each other's stories, and learn about one another on a deeper level. And I really appreciate Gloria Pierre for the very kind and generous invitation. Thank you. Member for Orléans. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, I uh, recently, during Constituency Week, uh, met with Principal Jennifer Coleman of Karen Wilson Secondary School, uh, who shared very exciting news with me, and I want to share them with the House today. Uh, thanks to the staff and the students, Karen Wilson hosted a very inspirational Relay for Life on, the, on May 11, 2018, and raised over $100,000. In the past year long, there were 140 Relay for Life events in schools across Canada that raised over $6 million. And I want to recognize the dedication of the Canadian Cancer Society that Karen Wilson has shown with the Relay for Life events has been amazing. And last May, a milestone was hit. In the past 15 years, the school has raised a total of over $800,000 for the fight against cancer. So I want to congratulate the staff and the students 
Also, on last weekend, Mr. Speaker, I have to share another news. On Saturday, October 13, I was very proud to take part of the fall bottle drive at a local beer store where empty bottles were collected to raise funds for the Rotary Home Foundation. And I'm a proud Rotarian, Mr. Speaker. The Rotary Home first opened in 1982 and is a family centered, non for profit organization that offers children and adults respite programs. So I want to say thank you to the beer store. Joe, Dave, Doug, and a generous donation by residents of Orleans for raising funds for our community. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. I invite all honourable members to join me in welcoming the many members and staff of Advocates who have joined us here at Queen's Park today. Advocates is the oldest and largest voluntary professional members association of financial advisors and planners in Canada, with more than 13,000 members nationwide, and over 6,000 are here in Ontario in 20 chapters. The work of a good financial planner is often uh, is almost in invisible. We don't take note of when things are well, but we certainly take notice in their absence. The data shows that Ontarians who receive financial advice, no matter what their income, tacket, income bracket is, are generally worse off. We know that sound financial advice can change lives. Our government is taking steps to ensure all Ontarians have access to the supports they need in order to plan for their future. Whether they are planning to send their child to university, as I did a few years ago, buying their first home, or saving for retirement, there's no substitute for good advice when it comes to making critical financial planning decisions for your family. That's why this government is committed to ensuring access to financial services, whether somebody lives in Barrie, Scarborough, or James Bay. We are committed to ensuring Ontario is a place where people want to invest and have access to this dedicated group of prof professionals. And I thank the members of Advocates for being here and for all the work they do for Ontarians throughout the year. I look forward to speaking more with our guests and invite all honourable members to join them at the reception this evening in the legislative dining room. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Park Dale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. In this House, health and health care have been uh, dominant topics of discussion, and rightly so. It was an important issue that uh, was top of uh, Ontarians' minds during the past election as well. And, uh, but what I think is that there is a part of health and health care that is missing from our conversations, and that is the social and economic conditions that influence health, the determinants of health. And we all know that these conditions are shaped by the amount of money, power, and resources that people have. Power and resources that are divided along racial lines, along gender lines, and many other social constructs. There is overwhelming research in health that shows precarity, racism, displacement, colonialism. All of these factors contribute to poor health. For too long, people's health have, has been viewed as being separate from the structural issues and problems in society. There has been an over-concentration on the bio and uh, biocycle me uh, mechanisms of health rather than on the political and economic context. context. Uh, I think that the social determinants of health approach is critical in the work that we do because social determinants of health is based on equity, and that means eliminating poverty, ending all forms of discrimination, fighting unemployment, fighting for free post-secondary education, quality child care, universal pharma care, and dental care for all. Let's, let's work towards making sure that all of these things are also part of the conversation when we talk about health and health care in this province. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am honoured to rise today in the House to discuss to discuss breast cancer, a disease that has devastated the lives of so many Ontario patients and their families. I would like to thank the member from Sudbury for speaking on this important issue today as well. Breast cancer is one of the most commonly diagnosed cancers, affecting women of all ages. We all know that the earlier a woman is diagnosed, 
the better her chances of survivor, survival once she begins treatment. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take a moment to raise awareness about a significant risk factor that is often overlooked by healthcare professionals and rarely discussed by the public, breast density. Women are considered to have dense breasts if their breasts contain a higher ratio of gland than fat. Research shows that dense breasts pose a more significant risk factor than a family history of the given cancer. Specifically, cancer is more likely in women with breast density larger than 75%. I would like to thank the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network for the important work they do on behalf of cancer survivors and their families, and for meeting with me to discuss this important issue, among others. Currently in Ontario, breast density information post a routine mammograph is not shared with family doctors unless patient's density is larger than 75%. We can do more for the women of Ontario, and I will continue, together with my colleagues, to advocate for patients in my riding of Mississauga Centre and across Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to say a few words about volunteerism in my great riding of Kitchener, Conestoga. Following the June election, I've spent the summer and fall attending community events in the City of Kitchener and the townships of Wilmot, Wellesley and Woolwich. This year, as with years previous, I was struck by the hard work and dedication demonstrated by individuals who sacrificed their spare time to sustain our Summer Canada Day celebrations, rural fall fairs and hallmark events like Oktoberfest, and not to forget the upcoming Remembrance Day commemorations and Christmas activities. Whether people participate through service clubs such as the Lions, 4-H and the Optimists, or of their own initiative, these events, which attract hundreds of thousands of dollars to our communities, would not be possible without their help. Unfortunately, local organizers who I've met have communicated their apprehension about the growing difficulty of recruiting volunteers and donations in recent years. There was one well-known spring festival that couldn't operate this year due to lack of volunteers, and a Canada, Canada Day festival that had for the first time charged admission due to insufficient donations. I will continue my efforts to support hard-working volunteers. They are not only sacrificing their time, but their own lives. Oh, my apologies. Lastly, I must thank the hard-working men and women who step forward and volunteer for my Ridings, my ridings Township Fire Services. They are not only sacrificing their time, but their own lives for our safety. However, this essential service is facing difficulties in, in recruitment, according to local chiefs. Thankfully, our government is encouraging volunteer fire services by revoking the new fire certification training, which has a financial burden on already well-trained firefighters, and by making major investments to improve communication equipment and frontline responders. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our time for member statements this afternoon.